In this video, I'll be discussing how we can determine the charges of main group atoms when they form ions. We've discussed previously that main group, many main group elements form ions with predictable charge. In this video, we're going to figure out why that is. We're going to use the concept of valency to explain why certain main group elements form these ions with predictable charges. Valency is simply the number of valence electrons. For the main group, we're really looking at the alkali metals and alkaline earth metals, as well as these um, elements in the P block of the periodic table, ending with the halogens and noble gases. So the valency of all elements in the first column of the periodic table is one, because those elements contain one valence electron, second column two, because those elements contain two valence electrons, all the way to the noble gases, which those elements contain eight valence electrons. Let's look at the noble gases in some more detail. You may have heard of this concept of the octet rule before, and the octet rule states that species with eight valence electrons tend to be particularly stable. The reason for this is because they have a so-called noble gas-like electron configuration. If we look at this in more detail, all of these noble gases, with the exception of helium, have an electron configuration shown underneath as generally ns2np6. n is the principal quantum number and may and may um, and will vary as we move down the row, or excuse me, down the column. We have for neon 2s2, 2p6, for argon 3s2, 3p6, etc. If we were to draw this electron configuration as an orbital diagram, we can keep it general and call this the ns orbital, and then we can have our p subshell, our np subshell. Now for noble gases, these sub, all of these orbitals are completely full. And if you add up the two electrons in the s orbital and six in the p, we get a total of our eight electrons, which is the origin of the octet rule, or eight. Um, what it means for this to be stable means that it is in a lower energy state or a more favorable energy state than other types or electron configurations with other numbers of valence electrons or other valencies. So again, a valency of eight has these, this special um, stability associated with it. Now it's also important to state for any rule, there are always exceptions. And we, uh, I highly recommend keeping that in mind as we move forward in future modules to discuss bonding and other more complex topics. For today, we'll focus on two classes of elements on the periodic table, reactive metals and reactive nonmetals. You'll recall that metals are on the left-hand side of the periodic table, um, generally speaking. We're looking at reactive metals, and if we were to write a general electron configuration, let's look at the alkali metals first. So alkali metals, alkali metals contain one valence electron, and that means their valency is equal to one. The general electron configuration for an alkali metal, as you can see in this first column shown, is ns1. That means that the alkali metal has one electron in its outer, or its valence electron, it consists of an electron in its outermost s orbital, highest energy s orbital. Let's look at sodium. So sodium has an electron configuration. If we were to write the full electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. So again, its valence electrons are 3s, uh, 1, one valence electron, and everything before this valence electron is a core electron, represented by the core of neon. Oops, neon. So when sodium loses an electron to form a cation, that electron will be lost from the highest energy orbital because again that's the the least stable electron so that will give sodium an electron configuration of 1s2 
2s2 2p6. You'll notice that this is the same as the electron configuration of neon. That means that now sodium contains uh, 10 total electrons um, instead of its original 11. Again, the reason why this happens, this electron loss, is because now the um, new species, the sodium cation, now has eight valence electrons again, associated with special stability. We can also repeat this for the alkaline earth metals, which I will abbreviate, okay? And they have a valency of two. Their electron configurations generally are NS2. And this is why metals that are alkaline earth metals, such as magnesium, calcium, everything shown in this column here, let's take magnesium for example, tend to form magnesium 2 plus cations, or in this case any, um, whatever the element is, will form a 2 plus cation. That is because the electrons in the outermost s orbital, the valence electrons, um, it's, elect or it's energetically favorable to lose those valence electrons, giving the cation the same electron configuration as its nearest noble gas. So again, the electron configuration for magnesium 2 plus would also be the electron configuration of neon because magnesium has 12 electrons. When it loses two, that means 10 electrons which is the same as the electron configuration of neon. And we call these, by the way, sodium plus and magnesium two plus, these are isoelectronic species, which means they have the same number of electrons, but different number of protons. Let's look at nonmetals now. Nonmetals, and we're going to specifically focus on the halogens, halogens, have the electron configuration NS2, NP6, or NP5. So if we were to draw an energy diagram showing the orbitals, we would have our NS with two electrons and our NP subshell with five electrons. Now, you'll notice that the valency of the halogens is seven. It has seven valence electrons. It's very close to having eight valence electrons. All that needs to happen is we need one more electron in this NP or uh, one of, in this, this unfilled NP orbital. So let's look at an example. For chlorine, chlorine has 17 electrons. Oh, sorry, let's actually do, um, let me erase this. Let's look at instead, instead, let's look at fluorine. So fluorine contains um, nine electrons the reason why fluorine forms an anion with a negative one charge is because it goes from having an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p5 to an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Again, 2 plus 6 is 8. 8 valence electrons, special stability. Now let's do some practice. Pause the video and try to draw the electron configuration and draw the orbital diagram for a neutral potassium atom and ion. When you're done, unpause and we'll pick it back up. So the orbital diagram for a neutral potassium ion and its electron configuration, we're talking about K here. K contains 19 electrons. So we can start from the um, 
previous noble gas, which is argon. And then we know that we are have an electron configuration of 4s1. If we were to draw the orbital diagram, we can use argon here as a base, and then the 4s contains one electron. Now the most stable potassium ion will be a potassium cation, and that's because we'll go from a configuration of 4s1 with one valence electron to a configuration with eight valence electrons. So K plus contains 18 electrons. It has the electron configuration of argon, which I'll actually write out like this, um, 3s2, 3p6. And again, this whole configuration is representative of the configuration of argon. So again, now we go from having only one electron in the outermost um, N level, the valence electrons, to now we have eight electrons. So we can draw those out. And of course, we can't forget we have all of the electrons, oops, sorry, from neon down here. All right, so the predicted charge for the mo most stable potassium ion would be plus one. And the reason for that is because it has, um, an it has a full, valence shell. Next, I'll allow you to do this one on your own. Um, so when we're looking at the electron configuration and orbital diagram for a neutral chlorine atom and the most stable chlorine ion, try this as a practice problem. Um, and you're welcome to check it, um, check it with a tutor or with your instructor. We're more than happy to, to talk about it with you. The objective of this video was to use valency to explain why the main group elements form ions with predictable charges. Here's another set of bonus practice problems for you to do. So determine the number or the charge of the most stable ion um, of these different elements um, using the concepts we talked about in this video. I highly recommend drawing orbital diagrams and writing out electron configurations for the atoms and ions as a support to your reasoning. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.